Hi guys, welcome to this step-by-step -step tutorial. If you've been hearing about the amazing capabilities of S-Log3 and you're wondering what it's all about and how to make the most of it, you're in the right place. In this video, I will guide you through everything you need to know about S-Log3. Let's jump right in. S-Log3 is a video recording mode in Sony cameras. It's designed to capture a wide range of light and shadow information, giving you more flexibility in color grading your footage in post-production. For example, this is a very contrasty scene with bright sunlight and deep shadow. S-Log3 will allow you to capture the details in both areas, while other picture profiles take the s -scene tone, for example, the highlight area is completely blown out. Now let's talk about the optimal settings for S-Log3 and how to correctly expose your footage. You will most likely to find the S-Log3 option under picture profile 8 or 9. Set the gamma to S-Log3 and the color mode to S-Gamma3.Cine. As for the detail setting, I'll set it to minus 7. When shooting with S-Log3, there are two crucial factors to keep in mind. First, it is important to stick to the base ISO, or perhaps slightly higher if the situation calls for it. The base ISO ensures the cleanest look for your footage, and the actual numbers varies depending on the camera model. For example, the base ISOs for ZVE-1 are 640 and 12800, while for the A7 IV, they are 800 and 3200. I have done some low-light tests, and you can see that when I switched from 10,000 to 12800, the footage suddenly cleaned up. So, if you find yourself one or two clicks below the base ISO, it is better to just go up to that number and compensate for the exposure by using a smaller aperture or an ND filter. When shooting in bright daylight, an ND filter is a must to avoid compromising the quality of your footage. Otherwise, you might have to use apertures like f13 or f16, which won't deliver the best results. The second but equally important thing to keep in mind is that you should always overexpose. On the monitor, you can see this MM. When the metering shows zero, it means it is correctly exposed. But with S-Log3, what you should do is overexpose by about plus 1.7. You can see if I overexpose too much, the plus 2 will be flashing. This is something you should try to avoid. A common mistake when shooting in S-Log3 is to underexpose. In post-production, an overexposed footage can easily be adjusted without losing details in the highlight area. But for an underexposed footage, if you try to jack back the shadow in post, the footage might become very noisy. Like I just said, when the ISO number is fixed at the base ISO, let's say using the ZVE-1 as an example, where I set the ISO to 12800, and following the 180 degree rule for shooting 24 FPS video, the shutter speed is set to 1 over 50 seconds. This means that the only setting you can adjust to control exposure is the aperture. Therefore, adjust the aperture until the metering display falls within the range of plus 1.3 to plus 2.0, and you should achieve pleasing results. I know some people might say that metering is not the most accurate way to measure the exposure and that it is better to use the zebra display, but honestly, I think they are not too far apart. So I'm happy with just exposing according to the metering on the monitor. Now, before we move on to the color grading section, here's a question you might have when shooting in S-Log3. 
What if ISO 640 is not enough and 12800 is too bright for this scenario? Well, even though I mentioned it is better to stick to the base ISO, sometimes a little bit higher than it will still deliver pretty good results. These are the ISO safe zones according to my experience. But of course, this is just my opinion. It really depends on what lighting situation you are in and what the purpose of the video is. When you shoot in S-Log3, the camera records the image with a flatter and less contrasty look. But this flat image is actually more flexible for post-processing. In post-production, you can adjust the aperture, contrast, and LUTs to create the desired look for your video. You can edit in whichever software you like. I prefer DaVinci Resolve because it's free and powerful. At the bottom, you will see the color page. And here you can see a node. If you are familiar with Photoshop, it kind of works like a layer. There are many, many ways to color grade a footage. I will show you two. The first way is the easiest way. At the upper left corner, you will find LUTs. Go to Sony. Here you can see several LUTs that helps you convert the S-Log footage to Rec. 709. Rec. 709 is the standard color for televisions and computer monitors. It defines how colors should look on screens. So just double click it and it's done. And if there is anything you want to adjust, you will have to add a node before the LUT. So right click, add node before, and you can adjust the light and shadow, colors, or contrast. There are lots of websites that allow you to download conversion LUTs that turn analog footages to Rec. 709. I have mentioned that in another video. Feel free to check it out. Another way to color grade a footage is to do the conversion by yourself. On the upper right corner, click Effect, Color Space Transform. You will just have to fill in each section. Sgamat3.cine, Slog3, and Output, choose Rec. 709. And again, you should adjust the lighting and color before the conversion. Due to its flat color profile, S-Log3 may appear somewhat washed out when viewed straight from the camera. But here is a bonus tip to help you preview the final look. Go to Camera Menu, Main Page. Just below the picture profile, you can activate Assist. On the right-hand side, select S-Log3 to Rec. 709. This feature allows you to preview an approximation of the final look directly on the camera. S-Log3 provides a wider latitude for making this adjustment without losing details or introducing excessive noise. Don't forget the two important things. Always stick to the base ISO and always overexpose unless you are already correctly exposed at the base ISO. That wraps up our comprehensive guide on S-Log3. I hope this tutorial has provided you with a clear understanding of what S-Log3 is and how to effectively use it in your video production workflow. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.